Yo, what's up everyone? How's it going? Thank you for checking out my weekend review video. My name is Remy Jeffries. I'm a Forex trader. In this video I do for you guys, I'd like to show you guys what I have on the radar for this upcoming week. But more importantly, I'd like to break down the charts and show you my analysis behind it, kind of give you my thought process and why I'm viewing the markets the way I am. If you are a nerd for technical analysis, then this is the channel for you because that is what I like to go over. Um, and just other stuff I'm learning along the way in my trading journey, hopefully to be helpful to you guys and yours. Um, in this week's video, what we're going to be looking at, we're looking at a few markets in regards to looking at decision points in the market. These are areas in the market that I truly love to find and spot out. The reason for that is because I expect a reaction off at these locations. And depending on what the market tells us, depending on what the market gives us, then that kind of tells me what I want to do in the market. And that's what I love. I love being predictive in my analysis but letting the market tell me what it wants to do and then playing off of that. And I think that's very important as traders. A lot of the times, you know, the, the newer, as I was a newer trader in the past, um, I would think, okay, I'm gonna do this, the market has to do this. Nah, that's not how it works. <laughs> the market does what it wants and you as a retail trader, you try to play off of that. You try to, you know, the trend is your friend. You go with the trend if that's what the, if that's what the market's giving you. If the market's giving you structure, you trade structure. And I think those decision points in the market is so important to spot these locations. And that's kind of what we're gonna go over in this video. So hopefully you guys find that valuable. Um, if you guys get value out of the video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button down below if you guys did. And like I said, always feel free to reach out to me. My socials are down there as well in the details section. Um, and let me know, you know, let me know if you guys Enjoy the video down in the comment section as well. So with that being said, let's hop into the charts. All right, so let's hop into the charts. The first pair we're gonna be looking at is the Euro Swissy. So look at the Euro Swissy, starting off on daily. I don't trade the daily, um, but if you are new to my videos, what I do is I do a top-down analysis, where I start off from the daily and I work my way down. It just gives me a broad view of what's going on in the market. So looking at the daily, what have we seen recently? We've kind of seen a uh, cascade of bearish days in the market, and we are coming to a stop right here at about 10736s. And why does this area have significance? If you look left, you can see right here. Boom. Boom. We are at a level where the market has bounced before and we are at a decision point in the market. I personally love these areas in the market. The reason why I sp I look to spot these areas in the market is because at this point as a trader, there's there's nothing really I can do. At this, at this point, I can wait for the market to tell me what it wants to do, and then I can react off of it. Um, the reason for that is because do I really want to get short here? Do I want to get short at a level of structure? Not really. Do I really have much to get long here? Not really at this current moment off of this candle. But when we go down to a lower time frame, let's go down to the four hour to see what this looks like. So this is that fall into this zone. For some reason, the data is a little bit different on the four hours than the daily. I'm not sure why. Um, but you can see right here, we're coming into this area. So what I would like to see in order to get involved, let's just draw out our draw out this little level right here. That can be where our little, um, our little support zone is at. So I want to see the market come into this location just as it's doing right here. And I asked myself, okay, well, is this an area where I can look to get long potentially, if I was looking to get long, where am I looking for, for the price to go to if I was to do that? Um, so basically, you know, this is the four, the four way, the four process that I was taught at tier one. It's IPDE, um, identify, predict, decide, execute. Identified, we're coming into a level of structure. We're coming into a decision point in the market. Um, predict, predict what's gonna happen next. I'm predicting either we bounce off of this level or we cut through it like a, like a knife through butter and then you know one of those two is gonna happen or we can just consolidate, of course, that, that's just the other option. Um, but I'm predicting one of those two options personally. Um, decide, decide how I wanna get involved. How I want to look to get involved here, like I said, this will depend on your aggression as a trader. Um, and you know, if you are a counter trend trader or a trend trader, whichever one you are, but as a counter trend trader, I'm looking to get involved here, possibly on a double bottom or, and this is the, like, this is the beauty. I, it took me a long time to realize as a, you know, learning to trade. It's the fact that, you know, there are going to be a lot of double bar, double bottoms, double tops in the market. The thing is, where are those double bottoms, double tops happening? You know, how the aggression you take to get involved in a trade is really dependent on your personality as a trader and what you feel comfortable taking. And the more experience you gain in the market, the more you, when you see certain setups, you, you can actually mold that and tell yourself, okay, well, I wanna be a little bit more aggressive with this because I have a really good risk reward. Or maybe I wanna be a little less aggressive with this because this isn't the greatest level of structure and I don't have a risk, great risk reward. So when we go down to the hourly, 
What I personally am gonna be looking for, where I would personally be looking for targets, the furthest I would look for targets if we were looking to get a part of some type of counter trend trade is right here at about 62s. Um, there isn't a lot of space in here, uh, but be, you know, it's the, it's the setup itself that I personally really like. So if I'm looking to get involved in some type of falling knife action right here, some type of structure buy, and I see right here, if I can get a really good risk reward on this trade, then maybe I will be a bit more aggressive in regards to looking to get involved on a higher, high, higher close. What I mean is, say we get a higher, high, higher close right here, boom, somewhere in this zone. I then know I have about 20 pips of profit, something like this. My stops are an eight share below, below the lows, which is about seven pips. So seven pips below 36 is 29s. So right about here. 29s. So this is what that risk reward would look like. And personally, this is, I believe this is a pretty good risk reward. It looks to be about a two to one. So we got right here, let me go 29s. Okay, so we got about a one, two to one. So this is maybe something you want to be a little bit more aggressive on in regards to your entries. Um, if you if you get a really good risk reward, but for example, this is one of those like example, if we were to get a higher, high, higher close somewhere up here, maybe at the higher end of that zone, where that pushes up my risk reward, that pushes my my targets to, I'm sorry, my risk to right there, my reward there, and my risk there, this is something maybe I don't wanna be as aggressive on, because you can see I'm getting less than a one-to-one. -one. Maybe instead, I wanna wait for a secondary option to get involved with a double bottom, which then gives me that good risk reward again. This is one of those things that it took me a long time to learn as a trader, is being malleable and understanding that on certain occasions, and it took hearing my mentor say this to me, uh, and I just hearing it and not truly understanding it until I was in the live markets, is that sometimes being more aggressive with your entries is warranted if you have a really good risk reward. Um, sometimes it's not if you don't have a great risk reward. Maybe you wanna be a little bit more conservative. Maybe instead of looking for a double bottom, you look for a 2618 type setup because it isn't a great risk reward or it isn't a great area structure. And this is something that will come with time in the market. But this is something I'm looking at this week, looking for some type of little relief. I'm not looking for some type of you know complete rotation at this level, um, but I'm looking for some type of bounce. Maybe like I said, up to about 107.62, somewhere in this zone. And the thing I love about this, this particular area in the market and why we were talking about looking at zones and looking at decision points is the fact that because we're in the zone, if we do break this level, say market goes down, we do get a lower, lower, lower close, we do end up breaking down, okay, perfect. I can start looking for short trades now. I don't, I don't, I'm not, I don't wanna be looking for longs at that point because we broke that level of structure. Maybe now I'm looking to get short. If I'm looking to get short, where am I looking for price to go? The next area in the market is this level right here. This is the next obvious level where um, where the market pops out to my eye as a swing in the market. Because what it looks like here, it looks like this swing right here, this swing right here, and before we broke here, we channeled and we broke to the upside. This is the next clear level of structure. And with my eyes personally, not everyone's gonna see it the same, but this is the next clear swing in the market. So if we can break this level right here, the next prediction is I can make a prediction we're going down to this level at about 10670s. And you can see that it can be somewhat of a stair step. Once we break this level, if we break that level, the next level is here and the next level is here. It's that stair step looking left, looking at the next level structure and predicting that if we break this, okay, where are we likely to go? Here's my next level. Um, so if we do break this level, okay, perfect. You know, if I if I don't look if I don't have a reason to get involved in a long here, say we break below something like this. Perfectly fine, because then I can start looking for short setups until we get to my prediction of this next level down here. Um, what you can look for, you can look for different type of trend continuation type setups. Personally, what I would like to do is I would honestly, you know, being greedy is I would love to see the market give some type of bounce here um, and then look for the market to break down to the downside after that. The reason why I personally love seeing this um, before a breakout is because it gives me a nice clear level, a nice clear swing in the market where I can then put my entries somewhere in this zone right here. Um, I can look for the market to return to this level. Let me draw that out. Something like this. We can get a nice clean break, a nice little swing beforehand, get a nice clean break. 
then I can look for a nice pullback into this initial area right here. I can look for some type of double bot, double top in this area, and then look to play it lower with potentially initial targets at that first level of structure with secondary targets at a 127, 1618, um, wherever it may be. Personally, do it with my testing. Um, I haven't tested this particular pair in regards to this type of setup, um, but on this type of setup, you you roughly hit secondary targets maybe about 40% of the time. Um, and this is something I'm planning on doing in a video in the future is kind of going over, you know, how it looks to when you're shooting for secondary targets and what the win rate and how the differences look. I think that would be something interesting to look at because for my, like I said, for my testing with my different filters, depending on, you know, if, if I can get a good risk reward here, the average win rate is roughly about 45 to 50% somewhere in that zone. And you can see right here, if you get a 45 to 50% win rate on a trade like this if you get entered here at the double top retest of the lows something like this as your stop and atr above the highs you don't need to win at a high clip to be a profitable for this to be a profitable setup for you but this is something i'm looking at this is a pair that i'm going to be keeping a close eye on this weekend or sorry this upcoming week to just kind of see how the market reacts at this level because this is like i said this is a major swing i love seeing these levels in the market because you're going to see a reaction you're gonna see a reaction one way or the other. Either it's gonna break down, or you're gonna see a nice little bounce and then a breakdown, or the market could reverse at this level, who knows? Uh, but, you know, the, mo the more, most important thing is, you know, we're being reactive in our actions. We're letting the market tell us what it wants to do. We're not telling the market what it's gonna do because we can't tell the market what it's gonna do because we, I'm assuming we can't, I'm assuming you can't swing the market uh, any way you want. I know I can't, so I'm basically just going off of whatever the market gives me. Um, and this is one of those areas where the market's going to tell you what it's going to want. Either the buyer's going to come in here, or you can see a nice bounce, or you know, sellers are going to push this through, and then you know, the next obvious level is this level down here, and then you can play it for a move there. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, you know, in regards to spotting these levels in the market, I, I, f I find it to be truly helpful for myself. And you can see right here, this was a level. Sorry, I just spotted this right now. Even this little area right here, you can see market popped right there. Tested it again. Tested it again. Tested it again. We came here, this was a decision point right here. You can see we had a nice little bounce and then the market broke through and not surprisingly when it broke through it was a strong bearish candle because you needed that momentum to push through this level because this is a clear level where there, which was once resistance which became support. You saw that bounce and then boom and not surprisingly you saw that big bullish candle right here pushing through the level. This is what you tend to see in the market. You tend to see that when you're at these levels where it's a an ice zone as I've heard it being called or a structure swap zone um, you will see a lot when it the market finally does push through there you will see these strong bullish candles um, pushing it through because the market needs that momentum to actually push it through um, so yeah hopefully that was helpful on this pair um, let's hop on the next one all right so let's hop on the next pair here and that is the dollar cat so look at a dollar cat starting off on a daily like we said um, you can see right here recently We've come into a level of structure looking left, and we've actually seen a nice little bounce. You've seen this nice bullish day right here. Price actually almost formed a double bottom. I don't think it was a valid one because this was a lower close, but we're having a nice bounce off of this level. Um, as you can see here, we have a nice swings in the market. We have a new structure high right here, outside return, new structure high, outside return, new structure high, and we are currently in an outside return, so that puts us in a nice decision point level right here. And th that's the kind of theme of this video is looking at these decision points in the market and letting the market tell you how it's gonna react to those zones. So when we go down to a four hour time frame, kind of see what's going on here. Um, let me pull some of these off. You can see right here, we actually had a, had a nice double bottom. Let's see, lowest close was 32s, close was 39. So this technically wasn't a double bottom for me, um, but you can see right here, we're having a nice bounce off of this level. So we can actually say, okay, well, the market is kind of bouncing off of this level. We're seeing a nice move. What could I predict? You know, identify, identify what's happening. The market came into the level of structure, you know, predict. I'm predicting us to move higher because we're having a nice bounce off of this level currently. Um, decide, decide how I want to get involved. So when we go down to our trading time frame, first let me, you know, throw on this top level right here to kind of show you where the swings are at in the market. Didn't do that on the last pair, I apologize. It's kind of a habit of what I do. Boom, okay, so like you can see those nice clear swings right here. Boom, outside return, new structure high, outside return. And we're like, so we're having that nice little bounce. We go down to the hourly, 
you know, well, if we do see a bounce, well, firstly, you know, where are you predicting price to go? The next clear level uh, for me is this level right here. As you can see, this was a nice structure, a nice structure swap zone right here, where you can see these nice little wicks. You're predicting it to be a level of resistance and a sneaky little level. Um, well, you guys might not be able to see. You may see it on a lower time frame. Is this little pause in the market right there? Um, when we go down to the hourly, you'll kind of see what that looks like. That little sneaky part, that little sneaky pause in the market was this little, is this little consolidation right here. This is something to be mindful of, um, but some of you may be thinking, okay, well, this is this current level right here. You know, that might be not a level of structure you want to pay attention to because that's not something you value. Instead, it's this level right here. As you can see, this level right here was tested multiple times before you got that nice breakdown to the, to the downside. Um, so you may be looking, okay, ask yourself, okay, how, how can I get involved? What is available to me? to get involved in this level. There wasn't a double bottom. Um, if you were able to get involved in this double bottom, we actually did have one on this particular time frame right here. We had a nice double bottom form. Um, so you may be looking at, okay, well, what's a secondary reason to get involved? Um, this is the secondary reason would potentially be a 2618 type setup. So what that means is you get a nice double bottom right here. Boom, price breaks up to the upside and you're looking for a 618 retracement down into the zone something like this, get a little closer, draw it out for you guys. That would be down here at about 124.48. So this could be kind of like your zone you're looking to get involved in, or you can just have a limit order sitting here. Um, and you can put, put your stops a ATR below the lows. An ATR below the low right here is 22s. So right now it's 18, so that would be 04s. If you can sneak it below that even handle number, I would personally at about 99s or 98s. Um, but let's just go with 04s just because that's what the ATR is here. Um, so we'll go with 04s. Let's draw that in here. So you can wait for price, and this will be dependent. Okay, so you can see right here we have a nice clear setup occurring. This will be dependent on where you're looking to place targets. Um, the reason for that is because if you're looking to, to place targets at the highest close, that would be right here at about 80. So you would need price to pull back into this area right here. Ah into this area right here. If you had a limit order sitting there, you may not get a one-to-one. -one. It depends if you even need a one-to-one, -one. I personally do. Um, so this wouldn't be one where I would just have a limit order sitting at the 618. I would actually be pushing my orders down to that 50% retracement so I can at least get a one-to-one -one personally. Um, and a quick way to kind of figure out whether you're getting a one-to-one, -one, I should have probably said this before I did it, is to take your Fibonacci retracement tool from where your targets would be to where your stops are at. And that kind of helps you mark out what that 50% retracement is. Um, so I would need market to actually go a little bit deeper than that 618 retracement. And I would need it to go into this zone right here to get involved personally. Um, but if you don't need a one-to-one, -one, and for example, say you're looking for, if you're not looking for a retest of the highs, and instead you're looking for a move to this level, this previous uh, level that we were looking at on the higher time frame. You don't need a move to the, you don't need a deeper retracement. You can just look for a nice 618 retracement right here. Wait for the, you could have a nice limit order sitting right here. Price comes down, you get involved. This will be your stops right here. Draw that in. Boom. And then your targets would be, if, you know, if you're looking for a 127 or like I said, you're looking for this area up here, you're looking for a retest of that level of structure this could be your targets. And as you can see right here, this is a pretty good risk reward. You know, it, it, and it really depends on where you value the market, where you think the market's gonna go. And, and this is something I can't tell you. Um, I, this is something that was really frustrating for me at the beginning, because I, you know, I, you know, I wanted to kind of trade exactly the way my mentor traded, because I, I, I knew he was successful, so I'm like, okay, I wanna trade exactly the way he does. But you know, you, at, at the end of the day, you have to trade what's comfortable for you. So I can tell you, me personally, I'm looking for here, but you may be thinking to yourself, man, that, and you maybe see the market go beyond this point, you'll be kicking yourself thinking, man, I should've been looking for extended targets. I thought the market was gonna go here. So this at the end of the day is what's important to you. Um, if you think this is one that's gonna hit this level, then you know, if you tested it that way, then definitely look for, look for the market to go to that level, look to get involved in that type of setup. But if you're a little bit more conservative in targets and that's personality wise, you know, maybe you just look for a retest of the highs. And if we don't get that move, say the market just comes to the 618 and reverses, guess what? That's a trade I'm not allowed to be, that's a trade I'm not gonna be in. Kinda sucks, but it is what it is. But at the same time, 
if the market does come down to this 50% retracement, I get involved here in a limit order and we both get stopped out, then I lose less on that trade than you lose by getting at the 618. It really just depends. There is no better way to trade. It's what you feel comfortable with and what you can trade consistently. And it took me like literally years to learn that. I, I hope you, when you guys see my videos, you get that. Because I'm not here. I don't want to just show you different setups. I don't want to show you different styles. What I want to do is I want to show you different styles in regards to showing you the different ideas you have in the market, different ideas and ways that you can get involved. Not necessarily show you, oh, this is a setup. This is a setup. But rather... If you find yourself being, okay, well, this is a nice setup. This is something conservative. I like that double double bottom in this level structure. Maybe I'll look to test that. I kind of like that. Or, oh, I like where he's taking targets there. Maybe I'll test that. Or maybe that isn't where I would be looking for targets. Maybe I'd be a little more aggressive and I'd look for a retest of that structure. I want to test that. You know, it's more, but the idea of me doing this is more to show you different ideas in regards to, you know, thinking outside the box and where you want to get involved and where you, how you want to structure your trading. And let's see if there's any fibs that line up with this level as well as we're here. Um, not really, but we do have a 382 lining up right here at this at this level. So that, like I said, that's another reason why I wouldn't want to be looking beyond there. But to each his own. Uh, um, but that's one one way to look at this if you're looking for a nice structured trade. The on the other end, if you're more of a trend continuation type trader, and you know you don't really see anything here, you're kind of just waiting. What you could do is when we go to our higher time frames. You can wait till we, you know, like, similar to the last pair we looked at, instead of looking to get involved in anything here, you can wait for a nice, clean break of this level. Wait for a nice, clean break. Then when you look left, you can tell yourself, okay, we broke this level of structure. Where are we likely to go next? You know, identify the break. Predict. Predict where I'm thinking the market's going to go. The next clear level that pops out to my eye is this level of structure right here. You can see right here, this is a clear swing in the market. This isn't a major level of structure because this would be the major level of structure, but this is a swing in the market. This is a next clear swing. So this is the next level where I would be predicting the market to go to. Um, and you can even look at the at this little inside level of structure right here as well, at about 123.70. So the next zone I would be looking for is right there from about 123.70 to about 123.25, which, which is the lowest close. And I'd be looking to for, for the market to go to that level. And you know, let's see if any fibs line up in this as well to see if that fits in there. Let me erase some of this. I apologize, there's a lot on here. Um, let's see if there's any fibs that line up with these levels. So we go swing high, swing low, and back. Boom, you can see we have a nice 382, sorry, a 127 extension right there at that nice inside level structure. Maybe, if, like I said, if you value fibs, that's a pretty decent level, personally, um, I would be looking at, because you can see we have a nice inside level structure we have a, a 127 lining up there. So maybe, you know, look to get involved in some type of break, pull back, play it to that zone. Maybe you're a little more aggressive. You know, you wanna, you, you're shooting for that next level of structure down here. You can see right here, we have a nice 618 here as well. This is a nice little cluster where we have a made, like a, a, not a major level, but we have a nice level of structure, a nice outside level of structure with a 1618, 1618 uh, fib in there as well. And an even handle number just a little bit lower. So maybe this is the overall level you're looking to go in the market. So these are the nice, these are the two clear zones in my eye where I'm viewing the market to go to. Um, and this will depend on, you know, like I said, how aggressive you are and, and how aggressive you want to take this trade. Let me draw that in there. And as a matter of fact, let's see if we have an ABCD pattern lining up in here anywhere. It's going to be a little hard because we don't know if this is the end of this swing. Um, but we do, boom, oh, such a beauty. I love when things line up like this. Uh, we have a nice ABCD pattern into this level of structure with a 1618. Um, as you can see, it, it's, a, it's a nice, beautiful level of confluence in the market. Um, it, but all of that will be dependent if we can get a nice clean break at this level. Um, yeah, but and like I said, we'll see what happens upcoming. This is another pair that I'm going to be keeping, keeping a close eye on because this is a pair that's personally in my portfolio. And uh, we'll be seeing what happens. Um, Letting the market tell me, like I said, the market told us we got a nice little bounce at this level. Boom! Look for that 2618. If you are a you know structure trader, depending on where you think the market's going to go, you can have different levels. Um, or if we get a nice clean break, which is something I'll be looking for as well. And that's the benefit of being a flexible trader, having different ways to attack the market. More importantly, testing these different ways and knowing that they're profitable, um, but but different ways to attack the market. So. We get a nice clean break, similar to the last pair. 
boom, I'm looking at this area right here. Boom, that would be the area I'm looking for the market to bounce back into to give me some type of double top. I know it, it sounds it's, it's so easy. It sounds similar, but it similar to the other pairs, but it really is. I'm looking for something in this zone. Let's go down to the hourly because that's my trading time frame. Um, scroll that down. It's a little ugly, but ugh, sorry. I don't know why it looks like that. So wait for the market to come break this level, come back up, a nice double top, and then boom, look to play for a retest of the lows and then secondary targets or trail it down to that next level of structure. It's, it, it, it sounds perfect. Uh, we'll see if it plays out. Who knows? Um, I might not get this pullback, which happens a lot. I, I can tell you through all my through the years I've tested, sometimes you just get something like this. But you can look to play it again right here. Just because you missed that initial move, you've, you've probably heard me say this in other other um, other videos. Just because you missed that initial move doesn't mean you can't catch on to the secondary move or the third move, whichever it may be. If, as long as you're looking for price to go down to where it's going to go, as long as price hasn't gone to that point yet, you can still look to get involved in that direction. Um, so yeah, that's the end of this pair. All right, so the next pair we have here is the Swissy Yen. So looking at the Swissy Yen, kind of seeing what's going on recently in the, on the daily, um, you can see right here, we recently are retesting the highs of this level. We haven't technically gotten a, br a break and close above, but we are retesting that level. You can see right here, we were in a nice structure consolidation. So in a way, we are at a decision point in the market. Uh, when we go down to the hour for the four hour, you can kind of see what this decision point looks like. And this is one of those things, it's, God, I'm getting such weird data. Because on here, we actually did get a break and close above on the four hour. So depending on what you use as a higher time frame in, in, your, in your own rules, um, you know, this may not be constituted as a higher, higher, higher close. It is for me. This is a break of structure because the four hour is my higher time frame. So when we draw our levels of structure, we have a level right here that was broken. We have a level down here to the downside. This was that consolidation that occurred. And this is our next level of structure up here. This is the major level, the next outside swing, that next outside level of structure in the market. So let's color that in. So we get a clear idea of you know, where are we at in the market and where things, where things lie. Um, and this was a beautiful uh, consolidation right here. If you were a pattern trader, from my eye, there looks to be two patterns that occurred in here that were both winners. Uh, look to be two target winners as well. Right here, X to A. 618 retracement, it looks like we at least hit a 618 on the B leg, and then a 127 extension for a Gartley pattern right down here. So what that looks like, X to A, A to B, B to C, and a C to D completion right there. Um, it was a shallow Gartley, but still a two target winner. Um, and also, if you, after that, let's color that a different color so it doesn't match up with the next one we're going to look at. Boom. Boom and boom. We also had a cipher in here as well. Um, we had a cipher right here. We go from X to A. You can see right there we hit a 382 retracement. We go from X to A and back. We at least hit a 127 extension. And then we go from X to C. And back, you can see right here, stops were up here at a, uh, for me personally at a 113, which was up here at uh, 12091s. The completion point was right there at the 786. So it looks X to A, A to B, B to C, and a C to D completion right there. So as soon as that, um, that Gartley hit secondary targets, you would have to get right involved in the cipher. You were in pain for a little bit, but you, as you can see right here, it looks like the X just barely got broken and closed above, but we ended up rolling over to hit two targets. Um, and if you constitute this, let me see. I don't think that's a bad, nope, okay, take that back. But you can see right here, boom, two nice patterns, uh, two nice pattern setups that occurred right there. Um, but as you can see right here, we're breaking this level of structure of the upside. You can ask yourself, okay, well, where am I predicting price to go now that we are breaking this level of structure. The next clear level, as we stated, the overall level is this higher level up here at about 122.65s. But if you pay attention to inside levels of structure, the next clear level of inside structure is right here. Boom, at about 121.49s, which is a, a nice even handled number. Um, as a matter of fact, let's draw that in as a zone. Draw that in as a zone right here. And these are just areas to pay attention to, you know, see how price, see how price reacts at these, at these levels. 
The next inside level of structure, which I'm keeping a close eye on personally, is this level right here. Uh, the reason for this level is you can see when price came down to this level, we consolidated, we formed a doji, and then boom, we had that nice big momentum candle to the downside. So this is a level where I would like to see the market come to, um, and more likely than not, we will see a, a reaction here as well. Um, so you know, it really depends on how you view the market and what you view, but this is these are just levels to pay attention to on the way up. This is the clear swing. This is the clear level right here, of course. You, you know, every, anyone looking at the chart can see that. But these are these little sneaky levels to pay attention to as price is going up. Um, and let's see, I don't know if we can actually even do any fibs at this level because we don't know where this swing point has ended. But if we go from this swing high to this swing, this swing low to this swing high and back, you can see right there we had a 1608 just at just at that zone 127 just below this one so you know not really a lot of fibs more likely with the higher level but you can see there is something right there so we go down to the hourly ask yourself how can you get involved um this will be your kill zone right here swing high to swing low so wait for price to get in here so what that looks like you know high low new structure high outside return new structure high outside return new structure high yep forming a new structure high and now we are currently forming an outside return so what you can look for is price you come into this zone um form whatever entry signal you like to see um some traders like to see a nice double bottom in here to get involved place your stops below the lows or place your stops below the overall swing which would be the safest place to place your stops um, because as long as this swing is intact the bullish trend is intact as you can see um, so as long as you, you know, it depends on how aggressive you want to be. Some traders are okay with putting, you know, stops here and then getting involved again on a secondary opportunity, another double bottom or a higher, higher, higher close lower. Um, but some traders like to just get involved once and then, you know, it is what it is. If I get, if I lose, I lose, um, and like to put, put their stops in the safest position really depends on you as a trader. Um, so what you can do is you wait for market to come into the zone as it is doing. If you take targets at the top at, at a retest of the highs for initial targets, that would be right here. And like I said, just so we looked on, I think it was the last pair we looked at, like the lowest right here is 70 and ATR below the lows is 11 pips. So we go 59s, boom. Me personally, I need at least a 50% retracement in order to get involved in a trade. Not all traders need that. And as we looked on the last pair, it's depending if you're looking for those extended targets. Um, for me, I need at least 50% for my first target. And my first target is a retest of the highs. So in order to do that, like we looked at, we take a Fibonacci retracement tool from the high, the highest close, to where, or wherever our first target is going to be to our stops to give us a clear view on where that 50% retracement lies. That 50% retracement lies right here at about 95. So as you can see, I oh, take that back, at about 88. So you can see we're not yet in my zone. So I'm not even looking to get involved. This is my kill zone. This is the area in the market where I'm looking for price to come down into getting a higher, higher close to get involved, and then that will give me some type of risk reward. If we get at least a one-to-one, -one. if we get involved here, this is what my risk reward will look like. Boom, let's color that in so you can see what that looks like. Right there, and right here. So if I can get involved somewhere in here, get a high, higher close, this is what my risk reward will look like. You see right there, get a nice two and a, something to one, um, depending on, like I said, depending on where you get your entry signal. Um, and if you're looking for secondary targets at that first initial inside level of structure, you can see right there, boom, right there. That's a, that's a beautiful risk reward in my eyes. Um, and this will, like I said, this will depend if you're looking for, if you're looking for initial targets up here, you can be a little bit more aggressive on where you're looking to get involved because, you know, you get a one-to-one -one anywhere in here, um, just about. For ex I'm gonna give you an example of what I'm talking about. If you still need stops at the same location, HR below the lows, and you're looking to get involved, what was it like? Say at the top of the zone, maybe somewhere in here. So, so now this is your initial target. You can see a 50% retracement is basically almost this entire zone. So, up until about 2103s to at least get a one to one. So, say if you got involved somewhere right here. You can still get a one to one, and still, you know, if you're if you value that one to one, you can still look to get involved somewhere right there. So there's so many different ways to get involved here, um, depending on you know, it's so malleable. Uh, I know you hear me say that a lot, but it really is. Hopefully these videos are showing you that, 
It really depends on how you view the market and where you think the market's gonna go. If you are a extension trader, trend, a trending trader, uh, especially in a market like this where you can see the market is trending and taking new highs, maybe you wanna be a little more aggressive. Um, me personally, that's not the type of trader I am, depending on the pair. Um, I wouldn't just be shooting for extended targets just because, but this is one of those times where I would be. The reason for that is because you put context with what's going on in the market. We recently broke this level of structure to the upside on, on my higher time frame. We don't really have a level of structure until this inside level. Maybe this is something I want to be a little more aggressive off and shooting for initial or secondary targets. You know, that's something to think about, something to look at in your testing. Um, this was supposed to be my quick pair. I apologize. This was a lot longer than it was supposed to be. But I hopefully you guys got value out of it. And uh, yeah, that's all I have for this one. All right, with that, we've come to an end of another weekend review video. Like I said earlier, hopefully you guys got value out of it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button down below and the little notification bell that way don't miss any of my future videos. Um, I, and I just want to say thank you for taking time out of your weekends to watch this or if you're watching this at some point in the future, thank you for taking time out of your weekdays. I don't know when you're watching this, but either way, I want to say thank you for taking time and always reaching out to me. I, like I said, I love talking to you guys about trading, um, whether it's, you know, questions or just, you know, different thought processes. I love talking trading, so always feel free to reach out to me. Like I said, my socials are down in the detail section below. Um, yeah, so with that being said, have a great trading week. Um, I will see you on a midweek video, depending on what the market gives us. Um, if we have something, then I'll make a video. If not, I don't just want to make a video just to make one. So we'll see what, what we'll see what's on the radar at that point, and then we'll kind of go from there. If not, I'll see you in next week's video. Take care and have a great trading week. I'll see you then. Bye.